an MTN, a Carbon County hero, continues to inspire. And now three years later, not quite three years later, there's a book out. We'll share details of injured firefighter Dan Stephenson's new book and what he hopes to do with it. Plus, a teenager is charged with homicide in the death of her mother, all stemming from a deadly car crash in Livingston. And a record cold day with 90s on the way. We'll try to make sense of the forecast. The 430 News starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Andrea Lutz. Tonight on the shelves, a Red Lodge firefighter's remarkable story of recovery after being burned over. It's all now commemorated in the pages of a new book. Dan Stephenson defied the odds when he was badly burned in 2021 while fighting the Harris Hill fire north of Joliet. I spoke to Dan and his author about the greater purpose of his book. Dan Stephenson's story is hard to relive. He had to remind him that he was strong. But perhaps yeah. telling it is just the kind of therapy a town like Red Lodge needs. Dan, you also need to consider that you inspire the community and we need one right now. Dan was not the only tragedy that summer, that Red Lodge had suffered a lot. That was the summer of 2021, and Red Lodge was shaken with tragedy. The Robertson Draw fire burned eight homes. A hiker died while recreating in the Beartooths, and Dan was burned over when the winds shifted and he was met with a wall of fire. So many people were involved in that summer, not just Dan. Dan went through hell and back, spending 60 days in recovery, relearning to eat, and walk. But then he came home. Him coming home made it possible for everybody to breathe again uh, because the summer had been so horrific. He wanted to put the story on pages, so he enlisted A.J. Ochin no to chronicle it. In Red Lodge, Montana. How do you say no to a firefighter who's been burned over? I do not share well with others. Um, and I, A.J. knows things about me that nobody knows. The two of them started working, taking 21 months to get it done. Difficult story, difficult subject matter. This was not an easy trip. Um, and those who know me know that. But the payback's good. The payback is wonderful. Dan's struggles went far beyond of what we saw from him in the public eye. He really was struggling internally, um, whether he wanted to live or die. So AJ, tried to put it in perspective. And to try to get that captured and put it on the page was very difficult. <laughs> and even after all Dan went through, he knew his journey with firefighting wasn't over. And everybody asked me, my family especially, why are you doing that? Because it's the fire that burns inside of him, not just the kind that burns over him. It took me a long time to get there and I'm not going to give it up easy. You can find the book on the shelves of bookstores across Montana, especially in Red Lodge and here in Billings. A teenager is charged with vehicular homicide after prosecutors say she was drunk and driving almost 100 miles an hour down a Livingston back road, rolling the car and killing her mom. Esperanza Montoya was arrested yesterday in Butte on a warrant for that December crash. Montoya was 18 at the time and driving on Old Clyde Road when she drove off the right side of the road and rolled the car. Court documents say her mom, 50-year-old Veneta Montoya of Billings, was killed in the crash while a 12-year-old girl was also injured. Documents also say Montoya was under the influence at the time of the crash. Some of that snow we saw yesterday continued to fall overnight, and so did the temperatures. Billings set a record this morning for the coldest June 18th ever. It was 38 degrees at 4 a.m. at the airport, breaking an old record low of 40 degrees back in 1939. In the higher elevation, snow was seen in Cook City with a winter weather advisory until 6 o'clock p.m. The Beartooth Highway is still closed, and officials are hoping to open it tomorrow morning as the temperatures warm up. With more, here's Chief Meteorologist. Meteorologist Ed McIntosh.
cool weather not quite done with us yet. We may be close to more record cold temperatures first thing tomorrow, but as the precipitation winds down, even some areas of fog wouldn't be out of the question in portions of the state. Thunderstorms could roll back into the picture by Friday. We'll show you the latest outlook there, but once we get into the weekend, we could be on our way to some of the warmest temperatures, certainly that we've seen so far in 2024. We'll take a look at all the forecast details coming up in just a few minutes. Fire season is back in mind. State, federal, and local leaders all met this morning to discuss this year's outlook. In that briefing was Dan Borsum. He's a Northern Rockies meteorologist leading the discussion on the fire outlook for this year. He says average data over the past 10 years shows a quote normal fire season. Officials say they have a goal to remind the public to always have their properties and themselves prepared in case of a wildfire. To highlight um, wildfire awareness, um, that it's not just a, a task for wildfire responders. We also need citizens across Montana to take time and prepare for the potential impacts of wildfires this summer. So for more information on how to prepare for the fire season, as well as to request fire professionals to come conduct a risk assessment of your property, you can visit mtfireinfo.org. A U.S. District Court judge put the brakes on a new federal ruling in Louisiana and Mississippi to require companies to give employees time off in order to obtain an abortion. The rule was set to take effect today, but the order puts that on hold while state leaders pursue a legal challenge. In his ruling, the judge says the Equal Opportunity Commission exceeded its authority by putting forward the regulation. Meanwhile, the U.S. Supreme Court could issue more important abortion decisions as early as this week. Our Joe St. George explains. Here in Washington, late June means all eyes on the United States Supreme Court, where typically the most controversial and consequential opinions are issued by the high court before the end of the month. There are 29 opinions that still need to be released, including some big topics like whether former President Trump has immunity from certain federal charges. There are cases related to social media and if content can be moderated or censored in any way, as well as a landmark opioid bankruptcy settlement case involving the Sackler family. Can that be settled and go on as planned? An abortion law from Idaho is also awaiting an opinion that may have consequences for the entire country. And homeless rights will be clarified as well, giving cities guidance as to whether they can continue to clean up homeless encampments as they have been doing. Or do unhoused Americans have rights to live and sleep wherever they wish? The next day in which the high court may issue opinions is Thursday and Friday of this week. Typically, those opinions are released around 10 a.m. Eastern time on the Supreme Court's website. Site. Last week, the Supreme Court issued their rulings regarding bump stocks, striking down Trump era guidance. They also allowed Mifepristone, commonly known as the abortion pill, to continue to be used in many places around the United States. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. A Missoula district judge heard oral arguments in a case challenging a law that seeks to define sex based on an individual's reproductive capacity. The ACLU says the legislative bill is one of numerous laws targeting transgendered Montanans. MTN Zach Volheim has more on that hearing and what happens next. Oral arguments for and against SB 458 were heard at the Missoula County Courthouse on Tuesday. The plaintiffs, represented by the ACLU, argue that SB 458 is unconstitutional on several grounds. Senate Bill 458 has stirred up controversy because advocates argue that it is discriminatory to transgender individuals and those that fall outside the state's definition of sex. Because of the current um, standing with um, Senate Bill 458, I'm unable to get a Montana state license because my birth certificates, my federal passport, and my state IDs all have X markers, um, non-binary gender markers on them. And so when I tried to get a Montana state ID, uh, they said I had to choose. So it was interesting they were talking about fraud day because I'm actually being forced to commit fraud um, by picking um, an M or an F marker on my IDs um, when all of my other documentation has um, X markers. Senate Bill 458 a general revisions bill to existing laws centered around the definition of what sex is when referring to gender. 
The ACLU argued to Judge Shane Veneta, a judge for Missoula County District Court, that SB 458 is unconstitutional on the grounds that it did not meet the requirement for the constitutional rule of having a single title, as well as it not going through the proper process to codify the bill. Essentially, they argued that the title was not specific enough about what was contained within the bill, which is illegal under the constitutional single title rule, as it did not include that the bill was defining two sexes. The state argued that it was included in the title, with the title of the bill being an act generally revising the laws to provide a common definition for the word sex when referring to a human being specific enough. The state also argued that the bill is exempted from the constitutional rule as it was a bill of general revisions to existing laws, which has legal precedent. The title is not clear, nor is it addressing one particular section of the code. In fact, this law amends 41 different sections of the Montana Code, and no one knew that when the legislature enacted it. MTN reached out to the state attorney's general's office, but did not hear a response back in time for airing. From here, both the state and the plaintiffs have to wait for a decision from the judge. The plaintiffs told MTN, however, that regardless of the ruling, they will continue to fight against SB 458. In Missoula, I'm Zach Volheim, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 430 News, tomorrow may be the perfect time to head to Montana's national parks, both weather-wise and wallet-wise, we'll explain. Plus, how is one of Montana's most popular rivers holding up? We have an update on the status of the Smith River.